What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we've got another viewer's car. This is Sadine's Porsche Panamera GTS. It is from 2013 which means that it is a pre-facelift and the GTS is probably the one to have in the range. It is a naturally aspirated 4.8 liter V8. It sounds amazing, it looks really cool. I used to think that this generation Panamera was not that good looking, but I think this particular one looks really good. So today I'm going to show you around it. We'll talk a bit about what the GTS gets over a regular Panamera, how it compares to a turbo, and then we'll take it for a drive. Jeez, very windy out today. Uh, for a drive towards the Autobahn, for an Autobahn blast. Now, the Panamera GTS, as I said, I did used to think it was very good looking, especially the rear. But Sadin bought this Panamera from 2013 recently with 30, jeez, oh, with 37,000 kilometers on it. He literally bought it from an older gentleman and it is in really good condition. So the headlights, the tail lights, the paint, everything just looks like it, Jesus mom. So poof, I just went to a different location quickly because it was way too windy over there. As I was saying, the headlights, the tail lights, the paint, everything looks like it is new. And that means that it, it looks fresh, this car. You see these Panameras sometimes when they have not been taken care of that well and they just look very old and you know, a bit scruffy. This one looks really good. Now, it also looks this good because it, it is a GTS. So you get a different front bumper with bigger air intakes for the GTS. Uh, these are actually from the turbo, the, the air intakes. And then you have this LED light in the bumper as well, which is different compared to a regular Panamera. The darker headlights for the GTS as well. And then these amazing 20 inch GTS wheels in black with that little chrome edge. Looks super nice. Behind that, we've got the brakes from a turbo as well. So upgraded brakes compared to a regular one. You can also get the PCCB carbon ceramics on this car optionally. 255 section tire at the front. These are uh, Pirelli Sotto Zero winter tires. The GTS also gets a 10 millimeter lower air suspension and a wider track to make it a little bit more dynamically able and uh, a bit more sporty because the GTS is supposed to be the sportiest one of the lineup. So the turbo, the turbo S, you know, they are about big power. The GTS is more about driving pleasure. So it's a very long car. It's a big car. It's bigger than, for instance, a 5 Series. It's more like 7 Series territory if you compare it to a BMW. And then at the rear, you can see the spoiler here. This one is always extended, but if we retract it magically, there it goes. So it folds in nicely and then you have a, well, a regular rear. But I like it with the spoiler extracted better this one it breaks up like the quite ugly rear of the car i think it, this looks a lot better and then you can see that this is a pre-facelift because it has like a little white in the or silver what is that in the rear lights i think it actually looks better than the facelift which has all red rear lights but you can see that these are just new and i think that really is a big thing for this car if they are like a bit scruffy from the sun uh, they become a bit vague and a bit like milky the car just instantly looks old and trashed gts exhaust as well sounds really good absolutely lovely dark v8 sound and then we've got what's up guys a passenger right there uh we kind of spoiled the magic of the retracting spoiler now because now they know it was you but we've got these lovely bucket seats in the rear as well, or sport seats with a center console in the middle there. So four seat setup. But you do have a decent amount of leg room, as you can see, because this is behind my own seat position. So that is not bad. Now let's check out the engine. 
4.8 liter naturally aspirated V8. In the pre-facelift, this is the same engine you get in a Panamera S uh, or 4S. In the facelift cars, the GTS kept this 4.8 liter naturally aspirated V8. Uh, and all, almost all other engines went to a turbocharged version. So the Panamera S went to a 3 liter V6 twin turbo. But the GTS kept the naturally aspirated V8. So with the facelift models, it is even more special. In the pre-facelift, it is actually the same engine as uh, the, the, the S and the 4S, but with a little bump in power. So this has 430 horsepower, 520 newton meters of torque. But as I said, it sounds amazing. It also has something called the sound symposer or something like that, uh, which sends sound through the A-pillar uh, into the cabin. So you have a little more sound to enjoy. I actually think these are the this is that thing it goes from the intake and then you have these hoses that go into i think that is it i think this is the sound symposer system so it sends intake sound into the cabin which is very nice zero to 100 4.5 seconds with a very aggressive launch control top speed to 88. now interior i have to say I think it stood the test of time pretty well. You have a lot of buttons. I mean, that is what this car was known for basically, that you had all these buttons on the center console and you also have like the fake ones. So uh, if you don't select a certain option, you just get like an empty slot, which is, I don't know, kind of cheap, but this one has most of them. I don't know what you can get that should be in there, but, uh, I, I really like this. The center console is high. You've got your gear lever up there as well the, for the PDK gearbox, seven speed. Nice basic steering wheel as well with a little indicator for Sport Plus. Pedals there. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice car to sit in. It's super comfy. And if we start it up. Oh, that is a lovely startup. And that was not even in Sport Plus mode. Let me check if we go to Sport Plus before we turn it on. Does that change the startup? No. So exhaust valves are open. Sport Plus engaged, as you can see. Manual mode. So let's go for a drive. It is a naturally aspirated engine and it delivers its peak power at like 6700 RPM. So it's not very torquey, even though it does have 520 newton meters, which is not bad. I mean, it's quite a large engine, big displacement, but I have to say it is quite nice to drive. Uh, if Even if you're not like chasing that red line, it's still quite a quick car and it does not feel underpowered, which is nice. I think peak torque is between like 3500 and 5000 RPM. So that is pretty usable. And it just sounds so freaking good. Oh, that is something that we are never going to experience ever again, probably. A big luxury limousine for business persons with a, oh, let's hit the tunnel, with a naturally aspirated V8. Oh, that is so nice. You get a little crackle on the shift as well. It's not super loud. It's not shouty, it's not obnoxious, it's, it's pure V8 sound. Now, as I said, it's got a very aggressive launch control. So if we go to automatic mode and turn off the traction control, foot on the brake, full throttle. It takes like half a second for it to hook up and for it to decide where to put the power. But then when it hooks up, it is 
quite quick. Four and a half seconds is not bad for a 10 year old, 2000 kilo, big ass sedan. So that is not bad. And that is almost all down to that aggressive launch control at, what is it? Almost like 6,000 RPM. Absolutely insane. Handling wise, I mean, you do feel the weight, of course. Uh, but I feel like Porsche didn't really try to hide it. They more like steered into the skid, basically. So they embraced the fact that it's just a big, heavy car. Uh, and they didn't lighten up the steering wheel too much to hide that weight. So you still have a bit of feel. You still get some feedback through the wheel on a road like this. But most of the bumps and the like potholes and stuff like that is filtered out. Although I was expecting it to be even more comfortable. Sometimes when you hit like a, a certain type of bump, it does send a little jolt through the drivetrain. So I do think that they have set up the car a little bit more sporty than in a regular uh, Panamera S or Turbo, for instance. But it's still super comfy. Oh, those downshifts are ridiculous. All right, so let's hit the Autobahn. It is so nice. It's not even that fast. It's just so enjoyable. All right, here we go. Full throttle. Starting at like 100 kilometers an hour. And well, it is really, really comfy. We do have a lot of wind today, as you've been able to experience. So I'm curious if that actually has an influence on the top speed of this car or that it has lost a couple of horses because we weren't able to go any faster than like 279 GPS and it's supposed to do 288. So we are nearing 280 on the speedo and we have to brake. But yeah, it, it would not go faster than 279 GPS. And Martijn tried for a really long time. It, it was like full throttle from the on-ramp all the way to the shell, to the gas station. Uh, and our 100 to 200 measurement also suggests that it has lost a bit of power because we did a 11.4 run and that is not really that fast. To give you an idea, my E55 AMG from 2004 did 9.3. So yeah, that makes quite a big difference. But it's not really what the car is about, of course. It's a naturally aspirated V8. So, Sadin bought this car from an older gentleman, as I said, who did 37,000 kilometers in 10 years. So he did like 3,700 a year, which is just so little. And I think he always kept it inside because it just looks spotless. It's taken care of well. But those shorter distances, if you only do, do shorter distances, that is also not great for a car. So that might also have something to do with a slight loss in power. But hey, I mean, it looks like this. It is in great condition. Otherwise, it looks like it's new and it feels like it's new. And it, wow, it's just an amazing car. I really, really like it. It's a, it's a really good long distance cruiser. And then if you feel like it, you just put your foot down. You have this amazing sound. That is nice. It's really stable at high speed. Even with this wind of today. 
That is so nice. Brakes, as I said, we've got the upgraded brakes from the turbo. Uh, pedal feel, it's, it's quite a soft pedal, but braking performance seems to be okay. Although, you know, with a 2000 kilo car, ceramic brakes would be great to have. So let's do one last little pull. There we go. Uh, we're not going anywhere, apparently. Um, so, Sadin, thank you so much for taking your car to us. Congrats on your amazing Porsche Panamera GTS. Sadin is 24, by the way. That is absolutely amazing to me. Uh, I mean, this car at 24, wow, what a dream. Absolutely love driving it. It sounds amazing. It feels really good. It's comfy, it's fast. Well, it's not that fast, but it's fast enough to have some fun. And it is just a really cool car. It's, I, I think it's a lot cooler than I thought a couple of years ago. So it's definitely growing on me and I really enjoy driving it. So to you guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video on the right or this playlist on the left. See you at the next one, bye.